Welcome to Salon Talks. I'm Mary Elizabeth Williams, and this woman who I think is now my new best friend yes. <laughs> is Michelle Monaghan. She is a Golden Globe nominated actor for True Detective. You also know her from the Mission Impossible franchise, Gone Baby Gone, Maid of Honor, a classic in our home, and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, so many other things. Yes. But today we're here to talk about your new Apple TV Plus original film, co-starring with, not too shabby, Mark Wahlberg, Maggie yeah. Q, Karen Hines, a bunch of really great young yeah. actors I've never seen before, yes. and you, it's called The Family Plan. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here and, um, and thrilled to be a part of that film, very, very much so. It is a fun movie. It reminds me of, I didn't realize until I saw this, that there is a whole genre of the person who is secretly a spy yeah. or secretly has this action-packed life. You've even been in another one of those movies. Yeah. You were in Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Smith. You yes. fixed Brad Pitt's computer. That's right. So tell me what drew you to this one. Well, you know, I, from the moment that I read it, uh, it was definitely something that I hadn't read in a really long time. I mean, I think action comedy family films are, are very few and far between. Uh, and certainly, um, I hadn't done comedy for a long time. And you referred to Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Maid of Honor. Um, I'd kind of veered off that path for a while. So when I read it, I, I just saw such a great opportunity to be able to kind of tap back into that facet of, 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 of what I love to do. And I got to do it with Mark Wahlberg. And I really respect him as an actor. Uh, he's, he's a terrific guy. We worked together several years ago on Patriot's Day, and obviously very different tonally, uh, but we had such a great time working together. We have a real mutual respect for one another, and he, of course, has great comedic timing. He's terrific, and I jumped at the chance. And I personally, the film I related to so much. I'm a, I'm a mom. I've got a 15-year-old at home. I've got a 10-year-old. And this film is really about the challenges and the struggles that family endure as a family involves and ages together and people living in their own little bubbles and things that are going on. And the, and, and the film is really about reconnecting and rediscovering one another and um, kind of reigniting that flame as well in, in a marriage. Right, and maybe if there's a way we can do it without killing people, that would be good. But sometimes <laughs> maybe we have, maybe there is. That's right, be. well, there, we, we only kill bad people, oh. so there we go, we only kill the bad people. It's true, so <laughs> tell me a little bit about who your character is, because you do a lot of really fun things in this movie. You get to, I just wanna, you get to do a keg handstand. Yes. You get to, kick some butt, you do some, I don't, I don't want to say too much, you do some pole vaulting, <laughs> um, and you get to do Ice Ice Baby oh, gosh. with, yes. he still will always be in my heart, Marky Mark. Yes, in the funky you, bunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the hardest thing to do, to learn how to do the, or to do? Okay, well, honestly, the the Ice Ice Baby, you, you have to understand something. I don't sing. I'm not comfortable. It's not like I'm way, way out of my comfort zone. Michelle, neither did Vanilla Ice. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's okay. And, and really, our director said the night before, hey, guys, I really think that you guys should sing a song tomorrow and improv a song. Here's a couple of ideas. And... By the way, it was sort of really picking, you know, um, the lesser of two evils. There were several songs, and really Ice Ice Baby was one that I was like, okay, I know this a little bit, I guess. And, you know, of course, the next morning we put it on, and I knew a lot more of it than I thought I did, of course, but I am a kid of the 90s, and we had a lot of fun doing it. And I think it's one of those moments that, you know, families can relate to because parents are just, yeah, like, hey, I was cool. Like, I know this music and I certainly know if I like turn around in the car, I'm definitely getting an eye roll from my kids. So that was a really fun moment. But as you said, this is one of the reasons why I love the film so much because it actually represents a lot of the qualities that I like um, to explore that I do creatively. There, there's a lot of action, which I love. And what made this action very different is that it was, it was a lot and I did pretty much all of my own stunts. I got to work alongside um, Maggie Q, who is not only a terrific actress, but is incredibly, well, she's a badass, let's just put it that way. But what made this really different and was a fresh spin for me, it just wasn't a traditional action scene. It was interlaced with a lot of comedy, and that for me made it really, really fun. And I think that's what's really kind of cool to watch. As far as the keg stand goes, I've done a few of those in my days, so that, 
there was like no practice needed on that front. Uh, and, and that was really fun too. It was just, it, there's a lot of great moments that, you know, listen, I'm, I'm, I play a wife um, to Mark Wahlberg's character, of course, we're the Morgans, uh, Jess, Jessica and Dan Morgan. And they've been, they've been married for 18 years and they're kind of just caught up in their life in the routine of, of marriage and kind of like a little bit in, in a rut, I guess. And they love each other deeply, but she's looking for something a little bit more spontaneous. She wants their lives to be a little bit bigger. So um, when uh, he takes them on an impromptu road trip to Vegas, obviously, unbeknownst to her, he's, you know, escaping these assassins uh, that you know, is caught up with him. You know, she's very, very excited. So she, she gets what she wants uh, eventually. And she's, uh, I really respect it that this movie is, your character is an athlete, she is a butt kicker in her own right. Mm -hmm. This is, you get to do, as you say, you get to do a lot. And when you say this is someone who, who wants a bigger life, Michelle, you have a big life. I do. You, do, you have a big <laughs> life. You have described yourself as an adrenaline junkie. I've watched a video of you jumping out of a plane for Mother's <laughs> Day. That's not what I do on Mother's Day. You are really, you are out there um, creatively, but mm -hmm. also personally, the kinds of risks that you're taking in your yeah. life for those of us who are a little more reticent yeah. I want to know how do you how do you summon that or are there things where you just you're on a set and you say actually no that that one I'm not gonna do it's too scary you know what I'm not comfortable in the water that's one of the things that I'm not really and I do work you know I do things in the water but I'm definitely game I'm not I have no no fear of heights um, I do like to jump out of planes I do like that that rush I do love an adrenaline rush, I'm not gonna lie. I do love getting to do my own stunts, but but kind of being in water and swimming underwater and having to hold my breath for camera, and I've done it for a while, that one makes me a little uncomfortable. I grew up in a landlocked state. I grew up in Iowa. I'm like used to playing in rivers and and things like that, but um, you know, being in the ocean and, and doing that, that's something that I usually don't lean into too much. So how do you then summon the courage? When you when you have to do it, how do you do it? Because you seem to me like well, a very brave I, person. I do do it, and I am, I do, I am pretty bold. I'm pretty brave. I, you know, listen, I work really extensively, obviously, with, with stunt teams and choreographers. You know, I'm so lucky, um, you know, when we're working at this kind of level, you have people that are really, really adept at what they do, and it's a really safe space. And when I mean that, I mean there's divers in the water, they're, they're you know, you're rigged up, you're, it's, you know, you're, you're, it's tested and then tested again and tested again. So I really feel safe. Um, and I really trust the people that I work with, I really do. So it allows me that opportunity to kind of really push my boundaries as an actor and because um, I like to be on screen as much as I can. Um, I really love love it, I value it. You know, I learned how to drive an 18-wheeler for a, for a film called Trucker. I still actually reflect on that. I'm like, I can't believe I actually did that. And you got the you had to have the get the license. I got the license, and I'm so glad I did because I, I learned so much about the livelihood, and I learned so much about lady truckers, which really informed me so much as a person. But I was so proud watching the film because um, I felt like you know you you really could value this performance. Um, because I really was behind behind the wheel, and I think that you I think you got that feeling from it. I want to ask you because you have done so many movies. When I look at your IMDb page, I think, oh, that sounds like a good one, but I, I haven't <laughs> seen that. You've done things. You've done. You've been in big franchises. Yeah. You've been in big successes, mm -hmm. blockbusters. You've also been in smaller things mm -hmm. that didn't go big. Yeah. Some of that was they were intentionally small, and some of them just didn't reach the audience. I want to ask you. What is something that you've done that you think now? You have a moment. Like, yeah. Tell me, like, oh, you should see this. This is something I'm oh, really proud of. That's really great. And so that's a very easy for me. I, I love Trucker, of course, as I mentioned, but there's another film that I'm really, really proud of called Fort Bliss. And uh, it's really a story about an army medic um, who is, uh, you know, leaves her family to really go to war and she makes that choice. And it's, it's an important subject matter because I value anyone who is a soldier that's a veteran. Um, but we share a perspective that when a man goes to war, he's a hero. However, if a woman goes to war and leaves her family, she's typically perceived as a bad mother. And so this, this, uh, 
film really, really explores what it means and the sacrifices it means to be a parent and go to war and leave your family for months on end and the sacrifices it is, but also, you know, you're serving your country, you're serving your fellow man. And I got to spend so many time, so much time with our fellow, um, like, veterans and soldiers, specifically women, to really hear their stories. And it's an important film, and it's really, really well done. It's authentic. And I got to work with a first-time lady um, writer-director. And for me, that was really, really special. I love the intimacy of independent film. I love the collaboration. I, I get very, very invested in those particular films. They're really hard for me to walk away from. My husband can attest to. Um, but they're, they're the ones that I actually hold very, very dear in my heart and my career. And you do, however, do a lot of, of these great big blockbusters. You are speaking of um, speaking of franchises. You're yeah. in the new you're in the new Maxine. I am so excited. <laughs> I am so excited. Following on on X and Pearl. Yes. Everybody everybody who's a horror fan can't wait. You've been in a lot of horror. Yeah. What is it about horror that draws you? You know, it's interesting because I'm I don't watch a lot of horror. It's not something that I'm drawn to, but I love the challenge of playing a character that is, oh gosh, I don't know. It's uh, it's something that is, I guess it's a, it's a darker character. And so unless it's a drama that's a very, very dark drama, um, I guess a horror just really, really pushes the envelope in that way. Um, I've done a movie called Blood, which is really, it was a horror film, but it was a really great character study of a woman and a family. And, and I loved that. I enjoyed working with Brad Anderson. Um, but that definitely was a darker one. And as far as Maxine goes, um, I was a huge fan. I am a huge fan of Ty West, of course, Mia Goth. Uh, when that opportunity came up, I, I got to sit down with Ty and uh, speak to him about the role in the film, Maxine, the third installment. I just, I really just shared with him how much I respected him as a filmmaker, and it would be a dream to be able to work with him. and. And boy, was it ever. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I think it might be a summer release. Uh, we've got an incredible cast. Um, Mia Goth, of course, um, is reprising her role as Maxine. Um, Kevin Bacon, um, Bobby Cannavale, myself, Elizabeth Debicki, Lily Collins, Moses Sumney. So it's a really wonderful, wonderful cast. It's a great ensemble. And this, this, this third installment is not going to disappoint you. It's so fabulous and so great. I'm so excited. I'm excited for it, too. You also have two things with Vince Vaughn. That you're yes. doing two different things. That's right. Television and film. That's right. So um, I did a, a, an Apple um, TV uh, series, a Bill Lawrence production called Bad Monkey, based on a Carl Hyacin book series. He's a former Miami Herald writer. Um, it was Bill's dream to adapt his books for television. So it's called Bad Monkey. It's uh, starring uh, Vince Vaughn, myself, Jody Turner Smith, Rob Delaney. Um, Meredith Hagner, we've got another wonderful uh, uh, ensemble and I think it's gonna come out probably this summer and it's the it's really like the humor is fantastic so I'm really excited for that show and uh, and Vince and I looking like I think this spring it's all gonna come together we get to reteam on a movie called Easy's Waltz uh, by writer Nick, Nick Pizzolatto who we both know. I did season one of True Detective, and he, of course, wrote uh, True Detective. And and Vince was, of course, in season two of True Detective. And so um, we've remained really tight with Nick, and he's written a really, really amazing film. Al Pacino is also going to be co-starring in that, which is really exciting. And, uh, and coincidentally, that also takes place in Las Vegas. So I'll be back there, hopefully shooting that perhaps in March or April. Congratulations. I have one more thing to ask yeah. you. You and I have something in common, yes. Michelle. Uh, and it happens to be not a great thing to have in common with anyone. It's melanoma. Oh, wow. Um, so, oh, no, no, it's okay. Oh, wow. But I love that you were speaking out about this. Thank I love you. that you are raising awareness of it, especially this time of year. People don't necessarily think about That's right. sun protection. They don't think that they need to pay attention to sunscreen and people are going into tanning beds right now wow. which are not regulated yes. you speak out about this you are raising awareness of this I know for the um, skin cancer That's foundation right. 
talk to me about what we need to know, especially oh. this time of year oh my when gosh. we get a little sloppy. This makes me really, really happy. Thank you for acknowledging that. It is very, very important to me. Um, I had melanoma. It was discovered by my husband. He was very well educated. He's Australian. And what skin cancer looked like, he really sincerely saved my life. Um, what's really important to remember and to understand is that it is the most common form of cancer. It happens to one in five people in their lifetime. Melanoma is deadly if it's not caught early. So the first thing that I always say is, of course, wear sunscreen, um, but even better yet, make sure you do those annual checkups. And um, I'm glad that you brought up the, the tanning beds. Um, you know, uh, actually, tanning in a tanning bed, also tanning outside, it's cumulative. All of those things add up over time and obviously manifest in cancer and things like that. And I'm going to be actively working on legislation um, going from state to state to try to ban uh, teen uh, tanning because most of our sun damage happens before the age of 18. And I was unfortunate. I was one of those gals that made the choice that I thought I needed a tan at a homecoming and prom and all those things. And I'm sure that that was additive um, to me getting skin cancer. And so I really want to, I really want to spread awareness. I want to protect our kids. Um, you know, I really believe that we can spread like good sun care habits. You know, I saw all of our kids like putting on hand sanitizer to protect themselves during uh, COVID. And I just want to encourage people to wear sunscreen and um, and just really share and have that awareness. And no one could be a better role model of you can be active, you can be outdoorsy, yes. you can be doing everything. You can jump and out of planes can, and still wear sunscreen. And still wear sunscreen. <laughs> Michelle Monaghan, thank you so much for joining me. Thank and you. The movie, once again, is called The Family Plan. It is an absolute hoot, and you can watch it on Apple. TV Plus. Thank you so much, Mary Elizabeth. Pleasure being here. Thanks.